This is The Sit Down, and I'm here with host, producer, actor, and comedian Nick Cannon. How are you doing? Yes, this hi. Way? What's going on, my Good brother? Good to see you. Good okay. to see you. Um, so you've hosted so many shows. I feel like you're a staple, and a lot of people think of TV. We've got America's I'll Got take Talent, <laughs> Wild and Out. Um, I'm interested in your new show, singing competition, The Masked Singer. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what got you into this idea? Man, it's pretty it, crazy. Yeah, it's actually I don't like to just host boring stuff, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. Like even you after, want a twist? Yeah, yeah. Like after America's Got Talent, I was like, man, I don't need to host anything anymore. And then I saw this concept, and I was like, yo, I love this. this okay. Is, this seems utterly ridiculous. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all in. And uh, it was just a lot of fun, man. So I was like, you know what? It, it was a global phenomenon, uh, you know, in some other territories. So I was like, this needs to be in America. And, you know, I'm the co-executive producer and the host. So I was like, let me present it to my people here. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested to see how it works out because it's a crazy concept. It's such a crazy concept. <laughs> just based off of the idea that it's A-list celebrities in, you know, head-to-toe costumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that, just a mask. It's yeah, like no, a full-on full on someone as a bird. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of fun just based off of just watching people uh, really just do like the most crazy performance they've probably ever done in their lives. Seems like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it. yeah right, cool. That comes out in January. You're also, January adding, yep. yeah, you're also adding late night television host. Yeah, uh, man. Doing a show for Fox, which is cool because it's like, you know, it's a lineup of just like, we've got enough white. Yeah, that was, there's, a bunch, there's enough people named <laughs> James or Jimmy uh, in late night. I'm, I'm trying to uh, add some melanin and some swag into yeah. that space. So, so what are you most excited about being in the late night space? Uh, Really just being myself, man. Being uh, somebody who's unapologetic, mm -hmm. somebody who uh, is outspoken, but at the same time, you know, welcoming, fun-loving, and, and I think, you know, I've kind of been preparing my entire career to mm -hmm. be in a space like this, because everybody knows, you know, uh, I, I love people, I love uh, interviewing, I love entertaining, so, you know, and that's usually a space where you get to do all of that. Yeah, in a way, it's almost kind of crazy that it's just taking this long to, because it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, I was, I've been busy doing a few other things. Sure. A, few other, a few other projects. Yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, you know, I, I feel like being able to bring that, that energy to the late night space, but still, you know, I, I've always looked up to people like Oprah and, and uh, Ellen and, uh, and the people who I felt like, you know, they were, may not be in late night, but they have uh, commanded an audience right. in, in their time slot in such mm -hmm. a way. I was like, that needs to be done in, in, in night television. Absolutely. I'd love to see it. Love to see thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, of course, after Kevin Hart uh, dropped out of hosting the Oscars, yeah. following everything, both his tweets and, yeah. and the debate over apologizing, uh, you, you know, started tweeting, um, you know, to <laughs> expose uh, homophobic tweets uh, from yeah. people like Chelsea Handler, uh, Sarah Silverman, Amy Schumer, yeah. I call them the pale witches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I want to make that clear. I want to make it clear. It's not like I'm a huge fan of, oh, of the three of them. Um, but I was curious that that yeah. was your response. So, so why did you feel the need to do that? Uh, a few reasons. I mean, one, I was sticking up with my best friend. You okay, know? so you and Kevin are very close. <laughs> yeah. So is that part of this? Uh, part, of course, that's the main part. And only, and you know, I like to point out selective outrage and hypocrisy, but mainly talking to that man I was so proud of him and I knew how important that job was to him mm -hmm. and then I was even more proud the way that he handled it once all of the controversy came his way and he chose to step down then apologize mm -hmm. and uh, the only reason why I pointed out some of the other people and I could have kept going mm -hmm. I mean I did my I did extensive research and you yeah, know you don't it, have to, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah you don't have to look far to yeah, find yeah, yeah. homophobic tweets and, and it was just and it was just showing how we all grow and even more than that it was more like I was like wow we can invite Mel Gibson to the Oscars mm -hmm. but Kevin can't come mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like what would you say to people though who feel that yes Chelsea Handler, Sarah Silverman, uh, Mel Gibson, you yeah. know, praised by <laughs> yeah. the Academy. But that, that does not absolve uh, Kevin from his own behavior. Uh, when we talk about Kevin's behavior, and I think this is the thing where we have to be very careful because it's a dangerous time where we just allow social media to dictate how we feel about people's character. Okay. I know Kevin Hart personally. Mm -hmm. I know Kevin Hart is an amazing individual. He has uh, one of the kindest and most generous spirits I've ever seen out of anyone in the entertainment industry. And for the one of the good guys to get uh, kind of hung out to dry is truly unfair, mm -hmm. uh, especially when he's been remorseful, when he said he's sorry. Uh, and then we got to ask ourselves, what does sorry actually mean? Because sorry, when you think about it, is a selfish statement. 
uh, based off of we sh if we're really looking for someone's character to see if he's grown, if he's grown from making statements that cause pain uh, to uh, to people, then look at his character. Mm -hmm. And if we're if we're putting his character on trial here, I think it, it stands the test of time. And so do when we look at the character of the people that I retweeted. Mm -hmm. They I salute respect their work as artists and think that they have done some great things. And even when you look at myself, you know what I mean. I've been an advocate and a, and a friend to the LGBTQ community for so many different times, you know, from my philanthropic work to even what we do at Wild and Out, you know, which I believe is the most progressive show on television because we welcome everyone and we offend everyone. <laughs> uh, uh, but I say that to say at times when we look like it, it's it's a little reminiscent of McCarthyism when you think about uh, at, at times like this where everyone's just scared to move, scared to speak. And I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm very unafraid. I'm very uh, fearless when it comes to this. Do you think comedians like Kevin Hart are more scared than LGBT people or trans uh, people? I think, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say that they're, no, no, not at all. I, I would say that, like, when, and I'm only speaking for Kevin because he's not here. I believe he's someone, in, in his act, he speaks openly, freely, because he and I are both uh, from the schools of the Richard Pryors, of the George Carlins, of of the Robin Williams, these people that were allowed to say whatever they wanted to say because the job of a comedian is to hold the mirror up to society and say, look. Uh, and uh, I believe all those people I retweeted have done that in the past. I believe Kevin has done it. I believe I, I do that. What I believe, though, is that we have to be very careful with our power because we all come from communities that have experienced great pain. Sure. And we, when we start to compare our pain, mm -hmm. that's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We're just doing it for a victory. We're looking for progress here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that this conversation needs to be had. And but I needed I, I need this conversation to happen on a, in an open base where no one's afraid to say how they ultimately feel, so we can grow from these experiences, opposed to talking about it in quiet, talking about it in in our private sectors, and then we come and, we, and then we want to be politically correct. Mm. That's my problem. Okay. I'm pro I have a problem with the the politically correct aspect. Yeah. I, I have a problem with the term politically right. correct. And you tweeted about this. Yeah, you tweeted about I'm, this yeah. just this week or last week. You yeah. said uh, I've been known. I know you know I've been saying fucked up. Since the sweater started, <laughs> uh, don't play that co politically correct bullshit. Fuck politics, only truth. All day. But yes. in 2012, you tweeted this: um, uh, If your best jokes include gay or faggot, you should get kicked off Twitter. This isn't the third grade. Not an insult. Lack of creativity. I'm having absolutely. a little no, trouble. I believe both of those how things. How are we? But how are we squaring the two of those? I, because Cause you're saying they're like people should get kicked off Twitter. Should and I get because off? One, because I'm saying if look at the statement though. I said if that's your best joke. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're if you're ultimately out here to hurt people mm -hmm. and to be mean and to be disgusting and mm -hmm. hateful, absolutely do away mm -hmm. with you. Now if you just choose to to use ignorant terms mm -hmm. then that's your own ignorance mm -hmm. and that's what that's what both of those statements were uh, I truly believe in everything that I said because it's like yo yeah if you're just a disgusting person mm -hmm. then yeah then uh, okay let's do it but you should know the difference between someone who's being hateful mm -hmm. and someone who is just doing something out of satire even out of ignorance it's like okay yeah let's 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 allow that person to grow we've all been to comedy shows where we're like man that person he mm -hmm. he definitely crossed the line and that's when i say a lot of comedians don't know they crossed the line until they've crossed the line and we'll deal with that accordingly but when you just looking what society has this issue with the, this fascination with punishment mm -hmm. opposed to like oh let's let's give them a punishment opposed to like no let's grow let's let's come to a common place of mm -hmm. understanding as humanity so so, so following what you're saying, yeah, yeah. it sounds like you're saying if, the, the old tweets yeah, from right. Kevin Hart, that totally. that's in the category of ignorance, Yes, and he's not in that place anymore. He's grown, as we have all grown. grown. And then, and this is the point. Has he done things with LGBT people since then? Yes, absolutely he has. I mean, if you watch, if you watch Real Husbands uh, of Hollywood, and it's so, it's funny how art can Im imitate life and, and, and vice versa. We did an entire episode uh, uh, about this exact subject where we attacked it head on with satire uh, and and it's so interesting that at this point you know this and this wasn't 2010 this was you know a few years ago mm -hmm. but we still dealt dealt with it in a way where you don't want to get caught up in these ideas where it's just 
all about who's right. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on what's right. Mm -hmm. And if and I hold the academy accountable in that sense because if we're going to bring up someone's past and force them mm -hmm. uh, because of your power, you want to force someone to apologize, not ask them if they should or not. You want to force them to in order mm -hmm. to keep their job. Let's because like, it wasn't ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that that's lets you know that's where we truly have issues when this thing of control or where you want to force someone to, then I believe we should force the academy to apologize how they've treated several communities. Let's go all the way back to Hattie McDaniels, the first black woman to ever receive an academy award. And she was forced mm -hmm. to sit in the back and be segregated from the rest of the Gone with the Wind mm -hmm. cast. Did we receive an apology from that academy? Mm -hmm. Or if you want to talk about the, you know, just as 2005 or a little, you know, during the time with the, the tweets that are uh, 2015, actually, mm -hmm. or in before where, you know, they wanted Kevin to apologize for mm -hmm. the 6,000 voting members were all male, 100 percent male and 95 percent white. Mm -hmm. But we've allowed the academy to grow mm -hmm. since then. And we said uh, we did the Oscar so white all of those things mm -hmm. and that was just a couple of years ago but we're allowing them to grow we didn't force them to apologize for those things so I feel like if we're gonna start bringing up people's past and saying that oh you made an ignorant statement mm -hmm. or a statement that was careless years ago mm -hmm. then so has the Academy yeah. and and but still we want to overlook the ideas yeah. of the Mel Gibson's and all these other yeah. things that yeah. that and we and we hold the Academy in such this this high regard but you know there's still the individual Individuals who have all probably made statements and supported statements that we wouldn't, we would look down upon. Well, you know, and, and to, to put up on, I, I would like to believe that we could do both. I would hope so. And systemic. But, yeah, I would okay, hope so. I, I do want to ask. It is the holidays. It is the holidays. On a lighter note, I would be remiss. <laughs> I would be remiss not to ask about Mariah. Uh, hey, I, I love hearing the how the Queen of Christmas. The, the Queen of Christmas. What is it like co-parenting with the Queen with of Christmas MC, during the with holidays? Miss Christmas. It's. it's I, I get the short end of the stick. <laughs> I'm so not cool when it comes to the holidays to my kids because mommy does it. You're not all. helping the kids harmonize on all I want for Christmas. That's that's all. My, mommy got Christmas on lock. I, I just go. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a whole nother holiday okay. <laughs> because she brings out. The elves, the reindeer, Santa showing up, <laughs> snow is it's, it's I don't I can't compete. That's fair. Yeah, Take yeah, paddles, absolutely. Paddles. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining. Such me a pleasure, and man. for the conversation. Oh no, thank you, you know, for the conversation. I'm glad we could do it's this. It's healthy. It's healthy. Absolutely. It All right, friends, you can of course watch Nick Hannon hosting The Masked Singer it premieres January second on Fox. Boy, into DM is up next. Stay tuned.